All right, the tournament is in full swing, and we're heading into the Sweet 16 this week. And DraftKings, well, they're about to make it that much sweeter. Did you know 68 million people are betting on the tournament? Yeah, that's 18 million more people betting than who wagered on the Super Bowl. So it's a big deal. From top seeds to Cinderella stories, there is nothing like basketball in March. And here's the sweet deal from our partners at DraftKings, who just launched a pick six, a new way to play daily fantasy. Right now, new customers earn 100% instant deposit match up to $100 in pick six credits when you deposit just $5. Getting started is so simple. You just download the DraftKings pick six app now. You can sign up with Bully Ball. That's our code. Bully Ball, and new customers will get a 100% deposit match up to $100 in Pick 6 credits when they deposit just $5. That's with code Bully Ball, only on DraftKings Pick 6. The crown is yours. If you've been listening to Bully Ball, you know that we are just loving women's college basketball right now. Star players are making this a tournament to watch. And the games, well, they're being played all around the country. So the best way to track the schedule and get the tickets you want is with Game Time. I just pull up the app and I can see which men's games are in, say, Los Angeles this week. That's where I live. Or when I'm traveling, I can see which games are near my location. And I can easily see the entire NCAA tournament schedule. That's huge. Game Time has the best layout, and it makes it so easy. I'm always checking the Game Time app for upcoming events. I can buy tickets stress-free because Game Time has a money-back guarantee. Let me say that again, a money-back guarantee. And Game Time always comes through with the last-minute deals. So I know that I'm getting the best price. Game Time is great for concerts, too. I can just pick my section, I can see the view from the seats, and Game Time will pick the seats for the best price. It just takes all the frustration and the guesswork out of it. It really helps me when I want to see the shows that I want to be at. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and you can use the code BULLYBALL for $20 off your first purchase. That's right, code BULLYBALL gives you $20 off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app today. You've got last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome to Bully Ball, presented by DraftKings. I'm Rachel Nichols, as always, Mr. DeMarcus Cousins across from me. And we have a friend today. No, it is not Boogie's Fern, Planty McPlanterson that he does have in the shot. Is that a fern? Is that a palm tree? I don't know what that is there. That's your friend. It's our magical. Friend. Uh, it's our, magical. A magical. Our magical <laughs> plant. That's a whole different thing. That's a, Their magical plants look different, Boog. I'm just going to say. Uh, <laughs> non-plant division, our other friend, Rajan Rondo. Do, welcome to the show. And um, you've been the name on everyone's lips this week. LeBron James did his first podcast with J.J. Redick, and you're the guy. He said his former teammate who should be coaching, who's not, he said it was you, and they were wondering why you're not coaching. So we've got you. Why aren't you coaching? Uh, well, I'm just waiting on Brian to buy that team in Vegas, and then I'll be, I'll be ready to go. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm just at home, obviously, uh, with the fam, uh, finishing my degree at the University of Kentucky. Uh, but main priorities is my daughter, uh, getting off of college properly. And, uh, you know, she's really big into volleyball right now, getting a lot of recruitment. So I just want to be here for her, and, uh, you know, that's my main focus. So eventually, hopefully really soon, I'll be in the coaching uh, alongside with ready to hire my new staff. Uh, I believe Boog might make the cut. Uh, <laughs> you know, I do need to enforce on the staff because, you know, people be these, <laughs> these kids nowadays, you know, they want to <laughs> might fight the coach. So I, gotta, I need a guy like Boog on the staff to see, you know, security purposes. <laughs> He'll have dual purposes on the staff. So, <laughs> I was going to say, what would his spe- if he was one of your assistant coaches? What would his what would you put as his specialty? Uh, security slash big man coach. So, All right, just checking. <laughs> I get to you taking ball. that job, book? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I, I got to oh, rock yeah. out with my dog, but uh, you know, he, he's he's giving me short end of the stick, which is fine. You know, I, I work my way up, but I'm. All game winning plays are ran through me. I don't give a, I don't give a damn what he has to say. That's part of my contract. That's the only way I'm signing, though. That's the only way I'm signing. All right. All right. All right. Well, I don't want to. I, I don't want to predict anyone's demise because every single one of us on this podcast today are big Coach Cal fans. But your alma mater could be calling you guys soon. I don't know. It has been rough 
rough down there at Kentucky. It's been, what, four or five days, guys, since UK dropped to one and four in its last five NCAA tournament games under Coach Cal. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you guys about this before we get to the NCAA stuff. There is blood in the streets down there. Uh, First of all, the Lexington Herald Leader newspaper misspelled Coach Calipari's name today in the paper in an article about whether he should be bought out of his contract or not. Calipari with a K. I don't know if this was just a copy editor error. There's people online saying that that copy desk was was fired recently and that there hasn't been enough people fact checking. I don't know if it was just intentionally disrespectful. Honestly, it doesn't matter. It's disrespectful either way. And and the fact that so many people are calling for Coach Cal to be fired. Uh, I want to ask you guys, we sit here on Monday morning. He still has his job. That could change by the time this podcast comes out. Um, what do you think should happen to Kentucky in the future with that program? What do you think should happen on the bench with the coach's seat? And what do you think should happen in the approach of the way that they recruit players? Do I'm going to start with you. Um, I'm not going to sit up here and say anyone should be fired. Um, obviously what he's done for the program over the last decade um, speaks for itself. Uh, with obviously the last couple of years hasn't been so great. And as a Kentucky fan, as a Kentucky alumni, uh, you know, they expect greatness night in, night out each year. Um, high expectation, especially when you have the number one recruiting class coming in. Um, people expect nothing but a championship. And the mindset is pretty much championship or bust. You know, he set the standards so high when he first came in. When he won in 2012 um, with all the NBA players he has, all the things he's done for all the players that he's coached in the past history. Uh, you know, but now with the loss of Oakland, allowing a guy like Jack uh, to shoot, to even shoot 20 three-point attempts in the game. Uh, knowing coming into the game plan, he's only taken, I think, four to eight mid-ranges all game, all season. And for all him, season. And for him to come out, all he season. And for, eight all season before that game. He made, <laughs> and for him to come out, threes. for him to come out and make 10 threes, seven in the first half, uh, to me, that is on the coach, coaching staff. Um, that is on the player personnel as well, understanding the game plan, the scout report. Uh, that guy shouldn't have had any effect on the game, let alone 32 points with zero assists. Uh, it's unacceptable for the University of Kentucky uh, playing against a team, you know, with all due respect. There's no way they shouldn't have even been in the game. Uh, and I get, you know, they're a little bit older. Uh, some people want to use that excuse. But for me, with the amount of time that you have as a college player, uh, the preparation that you have, you know, being across the street from a gym, not even across the street, you know, 10, 10 yards away from your gymnasium, uh, all the practice times they put in, there's no excuse for them to lose a team like Oakland. Um, and like I said, with the talent they have, seven potential NBA draft picks uh it's just unacceptable for them to lose those guys what you got cuz um first off um you know uh, my story at kentucky started off under calipari so um i was one of the first classes to come in well the first class to come in under calipari so um you know i i understand a standard that was you know helped set with that team and with you know being a part of his first team being there. So it was a standard set, which was, you know, championship or bust. Um, It was a standard set because of the quality of players that not only came in that first year, but we knew would would come in later on down the line. So it's going to always be the top talent, Um, always the top kids to come, you know, out of each class. So that's a standard. But uh, where I get kind of confused about it all is, if it was a standard set by, you know, a class that came in, I, and what was it before that? And that's where I kind of get lost with it. It's, it's like, how do we get to this place of, you know, we now disrespecting the guy that created a standard? To a, yeah, but it to is a, a what have we done? What have you done for me lately? World, right? And which, is, right. which is totally my, fine, my and I understand. But it's like he's brought more positivity to this university and to this oh. fan base than uh, any negativity he could have. And that's just my you, opinion. There, there's different ways you solve chip, this problem. <laughs> but there's different ways you solve that problem, right? So either you can get rid of him, right? That's one, mm-hmm. to say, great, he hasn't been able to compete in this market in a while. Let's get someone else. I always ask then, who are you bringing in? It's not a question of like, should we get rid of him or not? It's can you get right. someone better? So that's the biggest right. question. No, or, you can't. I, I was, well, the, okay. So that's a big, big question. And then the other part is I was talking to Anthony Davis about this over the weekend after a Laker game. And he was saying he thought when Kenny Payne left as his number two, that was a big hit. And that maybe the program needs to bring either Kenny 
physically back in under Cal or someone else like that instead of just getting rid of Cal, who obviously is such a powerful presence at that school. But that idea of who else is on that bench makes a huge difference in, t- in terms of who the players feel they can talk to. I agree with that 100 percent. This is this game is about, you know, evolving with the times. College basketball has evolved again. Um, yeah. This is a guy that's evolved with, with each generation of basketball. We talking about a guy that's found success when he was at UMass. So this isn't a guy that can't, you know, find his way through the, the evolution of the game. So that's more so why I'm so confused as to how we got to this point. Because no matter what university, no matter what legendary coach, they all went through a dry, a dry spell of, you know, losing tournaments, not really meeting the standard for that year. It happens with every program. Like And they get so fired. That's not true. That's not true. We're talking, and we're talking about the category of elite coaches. We're talking about the elite. Kyle is an elite. We're how not many, talking how many about chips. How many chips, Kyle got? <laughs> enough. No, no, don't give me enough. Give me, give me some facts. We gonna, we gonna, that, that is, that is a fact. Enough. And it's not. Listen, and, and it's and, been over a decade. It's been over cool. the, plus a decade. That's cool. It's, that's like cool. Rachel said earlier, it's about what have you done for me lately, world. Yeah, that the we're revenue, in. Is, revenue is booming. You've been to UK. That motherfucker don't look nothing like you used <laughs> to. It's, it's not just, it's, and that's like what you, I'm like saying. You just said, like you just said, it's, it's University of Kentucky. Winning don't, it's don't it's more, just winning championships. It's just winning championships. I'm not. I never will. I never will. I never will. It's been one of the greatest colleges of all time before Cal got there. 100%. He didn't just come there and set the standard that it's winning basketball now. It's been that. No, nah, it wasn't. That. When I got there, it wasn't. It was down. What? It was Boy, down. How many championships they got? How many championships they got? I'm talking about when I got there. I'm talking about when I got there. Find out for it. I'm talking about when I got there. I'm only speaking on when I got there. The standard wasn't championship or bust. But it's, it, yes, it was. It was it championship was. or bust with Billy Gillespie. Are we? We couldn't even oh, get his he, he, game. Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> Listen, that was what a bad hire. On a, that was a bad hire. So, like that, I said, when I got mistake. there, the standard wasn't championship. When we got it, there, it, it was championship still, or bust. It still was Kentucky basketball. And that's I'm like not saying, changing that. That's just like I'm saying, not saying the Boston Celtics not. or the Los Angeles Lakers. Like, you, we're not talking right. about Detroit and Pistons even, here. And even those franchises have dry spells. That's the point right. I'm making. It You're right. It ain't easy to win. You're right. It's not. So, my my, I don't understand how we get to the point where our next best option is to replace this coach. That doesn't even make with what revenue is going to go I'm down. Not, the, I never the, said the replace him. Everything, coach. everything that Calipari brings to a program <laughs> is going to go down if they replace this guy. Everything is going down. I, I disagree with that. It is UK. It is the brand. It is Duke. It is so North who would Carolina. you bring? Like, who would you bring? That's going to be. I never. Who would you put in there? I never. I never, I never I never Ooh. said fire Cal. I, I said that clearly. Yeah, that, I never that, said we should yes, replace him. He did him. never say All that. All I'm saying is, this is the big one of the biggest brands of basketball. I agree. At any level. 100%. That's all I'm saying. So, 100%. whoever they bring in, you're right. They got big ass shoes to fill, and it's definitely not an easy job at all. He's done a hell of a job again. I'm not, that's my guy. So, I'm not going to disrespect him or say he should be fired at all. No. I'm just telling the facts about my disappointment in this particular loss this year. And I agree 100%. Yeah. It's unacceptable. It, it looks it looks bad for the brand. I agree. Do you think but that I, if I Cal not, stays, he's got to make a major change, either in the way I he recruits or the way he I think it's coaches? about his staff. I think it's about his staff, and I think about the way he recruits. I think you should – I think you would be foolish not to go for all the top talent that comes out every year. That's, that's a given. Right. You have to do it. Right. But you now right. have to find a way to blend that young, fresh talent with some experienced – like season talent. And I think that blend helps this situation more so than going out there with five freshmen expecting them to to over or, 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 or overachieve on a yearly basis because at this point, that's what it's become. It's, you, you're right, though. It, it has only been one championship team that was also led by freshmen. But right, time after right. time, we're starting to see like this formula isn't going to work. So I do, I, like I was saying earlier, this is a guy that's evolved with every um, um, generation of basketball that he's been a part of. So I think he can once again do it again. It'll start with changing his staff. I think KP is a big part of that. They have to go get Kenny Payne back. I think he'll be available once Louisville decides to make their decision. KP oh, is they made theirs. They did. <laughs> so they're hard. Yes. So KP's yeah. available. He's available. That's, <laughs> yes. that's a step forward. We already know Decidedly what KP available. does. Decidedly available. Yes, we Rondo's know what KP available. brings. 
Um, <laughs> Rondo's available. Yes, absolutely. Rondo's available. I mean, I think, are you? I think two. I, I, I think T. Ulysses is a great is a great player, uh, a great mind on the bench as well. So I think a few slight changes, the way in recruitment, and this thing is going to be rolling just like the standard we set in 2010. It'll be the last same thing I'm gonna say thing. about this because I just feel like that he has to get the guys to buy in. That's and never I, I been a that, problem. I no, don't no, think no. So. I'm saying no, no. I'm, 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 listen, hear me out. I'm saying as far as buying into wanting the best for one another, uh, sacrificing because again, you got as that's the standard old, though. That's the no, standard. But listen, I, listen to what I'm saying. Every personnel is different. So when I come into a University of Kentucky, if I'm Rob Dillahan, I'm Reese Shepard, I'm Dewan, uh, DJ Wagner, like these guys are looking at the damn draft boards every day, every other, you know what I mean? So it's like mentally it's like, okay, I want to do what's best for the team. But at the same time, my agent's calling me, you know, I got the NIL deal money coming in. So that these are, these are just different times that these kids are going through to buy in to understand, okay, it's about sacrificing every night on the floor. I don't think they did that completely in understanding, okay, we need to focus on winning versus looking at the draft board. Because again, your, your personnel is different from when you came in, 80s team Absolutely. is different. So the times are different. Like I said, they're getting money now. So I feel like they have to buy in kind of how, uh, I hate to always go back to it, but like how Doc got us to buy in with the 2018. You know, we had a lot of new faces. Then what you said, mix in with some high uh, IQ guys, mix in some veteran guys that know the game with the young talent. And mesh to buy in to get one common goal. And I don't think they did it this year. And that's why I think they got bopped early exit because of that. And it's hard. I, I, I wasn't a kid at that age getting all this attention. Uh, put Drake's pulling me out on stage. They're telling me I was not a first round pick. Now I'm top five picking Reed Shepard. So again, that's, that's a lot of pressure to understand quiet out all the noise and focus in on winning one game at a time. And I think that's what they didn't do a great job of. And I think that starts with Cal and the staff getting them to buy into that, that system for me. So let's go to the NBA, guys, because there's still a lot happening in our league. Um, Houston has been on fire. Uh, they've won eight straight, nine out of ten. They're only one game back in the loss com- column from Golden State for that final play-in spot. There's 13 games left. And all of this is happening with Shangun being out. He's been out for the past six games and counting after a sprained ankle. They don't necessarily expect him back for the rest of the regular season. I, I don't know. I mean, the Rockets are don't really have anything to play for in either direction, meaning that like, yes, they can make the play in, but without Shangun, especially if he can't come back, I, I don't know what they're, they're doing from there, but also they don't have their first round draft pick. So it's not like they have to lose to get better draft position. What do you expect from them going forward? Um, I think the eight game winning streak that they're on right now is more so credit to the, the, the level of play that Jalen Green is playing at. Um, mm-hmm. The kid is playing lights out basketball I I want to say he's averaging 30 plus over over this stretch um he's playing the best basketball of his career uh, obviously they're missing a big piece in there a uh, big man a uh, young big man Sangoon um but uh, if you get you get the big fella back and this kid Jalen Green playing at this level and you put these two back together on the floor you know that's 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 scary potential right there. And uh, I think this is just a small sample size of, you know, what Houston has to build on. Um, you know, any type of momentum they can build, you know, going into this year, ne- uh, finishing out this year, going into the next season, I think is great for them. They hire uh, Udoka with the mindset of being a, a playoff team eventually. So everything that we're seeing unfold for this team is all part of their plan, in my opinion. So uh, they're taking the steps into becoming a good team. So um, regardless of how they finish out this year, I think this was a positive year for them. And, uh, you know, next year I think it'll be a big jump as they'll probably look to add more veteran presence, um, you know, actually put some talent around, you know, their core guys, and they'll figure out, you know, with the young pieces they do have, what they want and what they want to keep and what they can get rid of. So uh, I think everything's planned, exact, planned out exactly how they want it to, finishing out this year, going into next season. I would agree. Um, their schedule, they do have some winnable games the rest of the rest of their schedule. Um, but like you said, because the young kid is playing extremely well. And I don't think we give enough credit to Udoku. Um, you know, what he's been through the last two years, um, his change in uh, scenery and him to come in and do what he's doing with the, the I wouldn't say lack of talent, but the young talent that he has in Houston. Um, giving the point guard, Freddie Van Fleet, a hell of a credit. You know, kudos to him. He's been running the show, leading his guys. Uh, and then the OG, Jeff Green's down there. You know, it's uh, yeah. a teammate of mine. Uncle Jeff. Uh, they, they, don't, they don't have a Uncle lot of Jeff, bets, but again, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a winner. Uh, you know, you attach his name with winning, and I'm happy he's doing well exactly, you know, down there as well. So they have a lot of young talent. Um, you know, their best players obviously out right now, but at the same time, you know, it's the next man up mentality. 
And these guys are competitor, competitors in this league. You know, they wouldn't be in this league without, you know, having that type of mindset. So they definitely want to win out. And I believe they do want to, you know, get their foot in the game regardless of their best players are or not. Now, if they can get to the playing game, which I think they could possibly get there, because uh, you never know. Um, you know, the Warriors are in front of them, but uh, they're, I don't want to wish this on anybody, but they're an injury away or they're, you know, something happened in the locker room where they don't have their chemistry or uh, things happen and things can change in the last 10 games of the season. And, um, I, w- I would like to see those guys get into a playing game. You know, they'll be fun to watch on TV, especially when it all counts. So I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, them finishing the season. I'll be looking closely at how it plays out. And like I said, this, you just never know. This is a young, fun team to watch, and especially him, that young talent at the point guard position, Jalen Green. Well, look, it'd be great experience for them, right? If they do get into the play-in, I, I, obviously it's not as much as pressure as a playoff situation, but it is experience, and it's being in that high-stakes, here-we-go experience. So if some of their younger players do get a taste of that this year, that just puts them a step ahead for next year. You mentioned Jalen Green. I mean, obviously he's been streaky up and down, but he has been a rock star the past couple of weeks. Thompson has been great stepping in after Shangun got hurt and, and sort of putting him in that dunker spot, and I just think he's been so impressive. And you mentioned Udoka. We say culture change or culture shifter or something like that a lot, and people toss that around, and it can mean a lot of different things. But you have to remember how bottom of the barrel the Rockets felt just a couple right. seasons ago, right? Like the vibe around them was terrible. You know, there was so much junk being talked around the league about you don't want to be there, you don't want to go there. there. It's, you know, <laughs> like, that's where people go to die, right? Like, <laughs> Curls was there, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, just I, seriously, like no one wanted to be there. No one wanted to be around there. And now it's considered a team where, you know, people want to be in that locker room. That team looks fun. Like they have a good time together. Udoka, obviously, he's got great discipline, great defensive strategy. He is a coach who clearly players want to play for. We saw it in Boston and now we're seeing it here. So I think that matters just in terms of carryover, whether it goes into the summer, who they might pick up, you know, who wants to be there all of a sudden when it goes into the experience they've got going into next year and then if Shangun can come back and they can make some noise I think that'll be a big deal the Warriors man I don't know what they're going to do and how this is going to set them up I think they've lost six of ten these teams play each other coming up in, in this next stretch too so we'll see more there but it is there, there's going to be a lot of questions in Golden State over when this ends no matter how this ends of what do we do next okay Clay was willing to come off the bench in the end this season but what does that mean for the contract that they have to negotiate now with him this summer you know, do they want to be a team that just keeps it together no matter what until the wheels fall off? Have the wheels already fallen off? You know, all of these questions um, are still coming up for them. I, it's it, it's a lot. I don't know. Quick, quick on the Warriors, guys. Though, would you would you make a huge change there this summer if if they either get in the plan and lose, or you know, if things things don't end in a great way this year? Absolutely, I'll make a change. I'll make a big splash. Um, what would you if do? they don't get in? What would I do? Yeah, mm. I might have to figure out where we can put, you know, Draymond and Clay. I don't know. Um, you know, Boogie probably can speak to that more. Uh, he's played with those guys personally, but for me, it might be time to break up that dynasty. Um, I don't think you continue to hold on to it. Uh, just how they broke up uh, the big three in Boston. Uh, it's got to be a point in time where you do break it up and try to move forward. Not necessarily meaning rebuild, depending on the draft picks and who else is available come trade time uh, this summer, but uh, they don't make the play in and definitely got to get rid of, uh, you know, some people on the, on the team. Um, my opinion, I think it's, I, I've spoke on this before, but, um, mm-hmm. I think it's, it's time for a change in leadership at, at the uh, head coach position. Um, you know, that small ball era of basketball is done. And I think that's what Steve Kerr's, you know, specialty was in that, you know, in that style of play in that moment in time. Um, I don't think, the, I mean, the last championship team had a seven foot center. So obviously the small ball era is over. Um, I'm also leaning so, towards the leadership. I still think you have great core pieces in those guys. I think they're the foundation. I think they deserve to ride off in the sunset on their own terms. They've done that much for the Golden State Warriors. Once again, I don't just look at the production, you know, of what they they've done on the court, I think about everything they bought to the organization. When they when they purchased the organization, it was I may be wrong, but it was somewhere around five six hundred million. You yeah. look at this organization now, it was worth <laughs> three billion dollars. It's crazy. Joe Lacob Joe Lacob did not do that. <laughs> Steve Kerr did not do that. Steph Draymond, Curry, man. Steph Curry, and Clay Thompson did that, 
and let's throw in Kevin Durant as well. Like, those guys did that. So, like I said, I feel like they should be able to go out on the terms they want to go out on. Um, you know, what Clay is going through, I get it, bro. Like, I was, I was in that spot trying to, you know, accept the criticism of guys who've never done it at your level. But you got to – you got to accept, you know, their opinion of what you should be as a player. Like, it's, it's hard to deal with. So I know Clay's in a tough spot right now. Um, but uh, I think it's a time. I think it's time for a change in leadership. I think those guys ride off in the sunset, and you know, you figure out a new style of play and, and what talent to place around those guys to be a productive team. Steph Curry still has a lot in the tank. Steph still, ha- I mean, uh, Clay has a lot in the tank, and so does Draymond. I think. It's about filling out, you know, the roster with real ideal talent that also enhance them and vice versa. Um, because what can you fill it out with with their contracts? What can you fill that roster out with? Again, everybody. I'm not saying you know, the- I'm not saying contracts shouldn't change. I said they should be able to ride off in the sunset. If you no no, if you, I'm, I'm saying but you, how, do you, how do you put how do you incorporate Clay, Clay, Clay's around Clay's them? deal is not done yet, so we're going to see what happens this summer yeah. and whether you know Clay they they put an offer on the table to him this past summer. He didn't take it. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, now that offer is going to be a lot lower. So, so the question is sort of how little are you paying him, and what what does that free up? I don't know. They're still way overextended. That's the reason I said I understand the place Clay is in because it will be a change, and you know his value amongst the league. And I I believe he think he'll be able to you know maybe find it somewhere else, which may not be the case. You know what I mean? That's just how the league works. But uh, I still think it should be something where this guy. Rise off in the sunset on his own terms. I think he's due to respect to figure it out. Um, so uh, that's more so what I mean by when it comes to that. I agree with you. Contracts do have to change because the production isn't the same. It's only one guy going to be making the money he's worth, and he's one of the faces of the league. Understand it. Correct. Understand also, I was going to say is, by the way, it doesn't matter in the end what any of us watching think. It matters what Steph Curry thinks, right? If Steph yeah. would rather keep this team together His and just, hey, let's see there. what we can do, they will be there. If he wants Steve Kerr to stay there, Steve Kerr will be there. Um, if Steph goes to management or management comes to Steph and said, what's more important to you, sort of the loyalty factor and being with these guys or winning another title, those are not the same thing anymore. I mean, it's pretty obvious right. that those are two different roads. So mm-hmm. it's okay. The answer could be either one. Either answer mm-hmm. is okay. The question is, which is your answer? And I think what Steph answers that question will sort of determine this franchise. Um, it's just always a bummer to see sort of some of the ups and downs and backs and forths of what you say are these great champions and guys who have given so much to just the league, the team. We've watched them do so much and accomplish so much. I'm, I'm very interested to see how this next stretch goes, you know, with these teams we're talking about, Houston, the Warriors, obviously the Lakers. Um, and then there's jostling in the middle of that Western Conference bracket too, we got to talk about what's going on with the Pelicans, guys, because they've won 8 of 10. Zion was a beast on Sunday. He scored 36 points, beating the Pistons. And look, it was the Pistons. They were shorthanded. The, I know. The, I get the it. The Pistons. The Pistons. But, <laughs> but, but, okay. But we have seen, <laughs> look, we've seen all over the league this year. You he know, shot the, the Lakers. Shot from the field. Like. The Lakers go in without LeBron to Boston, and they win. I mean, you know, stuff happens. You still got to beat the teams you're supposed to beat. And we haven't seen that all season. So the fact that Zion went in, beat this team, as you said, 13 for 14 from the floor, 10 for 14 from the line. This all happened in 36 minutes, seven rebounds, six assists. The crowd, the Pistons crowd cheered him when he left the game. Um, things are going well for this team. <laughs> They're only, why are you laughing at me? What? Okay, go. What? Um, I mean, it's, it's like, it's Detroit. Back when I played, okay. It's like when you played against the Phoenix Suns, you knew you were going to get your numbers. It's like, you know, these, this is a game where it's like, okay, I'm going to get my numbers up or, you know, I need to reach a certain milestone in my, you know, my, my contract. This is the team you get it on. Um, but looking forward, no, seriously, look, I went to the game when I watched against Boston. I didn't know, again, I don't want to be Sanders second, but I went to the game, I played, I watched the Boston Detroit game. Yeah. I could name two players on the floor of Detroit. I mean, yeah. I got, I've been there for a while. I'm a little older. I don't watch much basketball, but at the same time, I didn't know a guy on the floor. But jumping back to the Pelicans, <laughs> these guys have a tough ass stretch coming up. They, they did. got OKC, Bucks, Celtics, Suns, Magic. Now with with Bi out, Brandon Ingram out, I don't I don't know. I, I feel like they possibly could drop, even though all these games are at home. Which role players play better at home? But at the same time, these are the top teams in our league coming in, uh, ready to go. So I don't know what Willie's going to say to get these guys going. It is obviously next man up mentality, and if Zion can play the way he's playing, but again, these elite teams, he will not shoot thirteen from fourteen from the field. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. sure they're going to pack the paint, make him shoot the game. So again, obviously the scouting report will be different. The personnel that he's about to play against is going to be completely different. 
and he's going to have found a different way to be effective. And to me, who's the other playmaker? Um, you know, with all due respect, to CJ McCullen. You know, he's obviously a score first guy, but with Bi out, who who creates the offense for uh, for the Pelicans coming up? For the Trey next, Murphy. Next... Okay, because <laughs> against the Celtics, <laughs> the Bucks, the, the Suns. <laughs> Okay, I can't, I'm actually I'm gonna watch these games particularly just just talk shit to you the next the next two weeks see how it works out. Check, well, I, check well, on. well, I feel completely different than this guy. Uh, I'm gonna mm-hmm. give the Pelicans and Zion a lot more credit uh, because they're not getting that. I mean, early on, shit. I would say the past two seasons, two and a half seasons, Zion has received so much criticism. Like we've we've. We've talked down on him. We told him all the things. He, well, I ain't gonna say talk down on him. He's received a lot of negative. No, it was just it was just earlier this season. It was only a no, couple months ago. There were all well. those headlines about well. about uh, about like, oh, he's not listening to coaching staff. He still won't change his diet. I mean, it's been this way, and it's been as recent as just a couple months ago. Well, the kid looks incredible as of lately. His body looks mm-hmm. like he's in shape. He's playing at a high level. He's helping carry his team also with, you know, B.I. Obviously, B.I. is out right now. But I think they're well coached with Willie Green. I think they have a good young core. Herb Jones, the Bama guy, got to shout out him. I think he's a great two-way player. Trey Murphy, he's, he's an under-the-radar guy, but he can really, really play this game. He's a young, up-and-coming talent. We, talking like you know that that version that that wing version of the Paul Georges that's being created, the Brandon Millers. Trey Murphy is also kind of in that category. Like he's a really really talented wing, and um, I think his him stepping up in replacement of Bi. Obviously, everybody's going to be able to you know notice his talent a little more. Um, I think yeah. he'll also be able to you know carry a bit of that weight. He's not the level of Bi, but you know he has the potential to be so. But uh, this this Pelicans team has a lot of talent, and um, I think they're playing well. I want to credit Zion. I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm I love that you received the criticism, actually went and applied it and bettered yourself. That that's a true sign of a pro. That's a that's a sign of a guy that wants to get it right. That's actually chasing greatness. Um, you got two options. You can either crumble from it, mm-hmm. or you can take in the information and and build yourself up with it. And I think he did that. So. Uh, I want to give you your flowers. I'm proud of you, and, I'm, and I love what I'm seeing from you as of lately. So, uh, you know, stay on that. And, um, you know, I think this Pelicans team has a lot of potential. So, uh, I feel completely yeah, I, opposite. I, I, right. I was talking about the next five games, though. They, they have I think been a they have job. a chance to win. They, they are a really good team. They have a chance to win. They no, do. every every time you lay something, you got a chance to win. A, a high oh. chance to win. Well, How look, about that? They just got it. Look, both of these. <laughs> you've got we'll the Pelicans and the we'll Clippers. <laughs> I was gonna say we're gonna get to we're gonna get to bets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, 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 wait. Hundred push. That's what I'm talking about. A game. Hundred a game. Hundred push. Uh, I ain't talking about much. Cool, man. I need to work on my shit anyway. I ain't tripping, bro. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. Okay. All right, wait, wait. So this is for the next five games on the Pelican schedule? I just want to get this down. Yes. Next five games on the Pelican schedule. You've got OKC, Milwaukee, Boston, Phoenix, Orlando. All five games? Are we doing per game or are we doing one of those games? Hold on. Let me look at this again. Okay. Yeah, look at it. Milwaukee, Boston, Phoenix, Orlando. Carried one. Examine. Stroke my beard. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, it's a bet. It's a bet. Let's do bet. it. It's okay, a bet. Good. All right, good. <laughs> Wait, what are the you stakes? Be, You've not defined. You might be looking at 250. 50 a game. 50 a game. That's cool. Okay, 50 a game. Okay. All right. That's cool. There we go. I know I got, I know I got one talk, set of 50. I know I got one set with Boston. I got one we set talk of about, 50. We talk about Zion transformation. We're going to see Cuz transformation in the next <laughs> Push, 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 push. <laughs> well, look, the Pelicans are in fifth right now. Uh, you know, they're definitely in striking distance of the Clippers in fourth. I'm not sure it matters, you know, where, where those teams go in in terms of, you know, who has home court in a ser- potential series there. Um, I think both of them just have to worry about staying out of that sixth spot. Uh, with the Clippers, though, look, they've not had a good stretch, right? That's at one point in the middle of the season, it looked like, man, they could actually be a t- title contender here right now. It just looks like they're struggling to find themselves going into the playoffs. Obviously the Russell Westbrook injury 
We all said it at the time. Obviously, the players, Paul George, made a big deal at the time. This is not nothing. Just because Russell Westbrook was the guy, the odd man out when Harden went in, he was the guy who ended up on the second unit. That was a huge difference maker for their team, and we're seeing some of it. And we saw it on Sunday. The Sixers came in, defeated the Clippers. Right. This was the first game played between these two teams since James Harden got traded. Um you know, I, I just feel like the Clippers are still trying to find their way. And the Sixers, who've been trying to stay afloat without Embiid, are starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, they're eighth in the East. They're tied um, Indiana and Miami in the loss column. They have six and seven. But Embiid's been progressing. He could be back in the next couple weeks. And I guess I want to ask you guys, if he's able to come back, what will that be like for him? He has been missing for nearly two months, I think just around two months. What is it like to come back from an injury, especially a big man bug? What, what can we expect? Um, we, we can expect, you know, an adjustment period for him. Um, you know, being a seven foot, 280 plus guy, I'm going to say 290. Um, plus. <laughs> plus, 290 plus. Uh, he's a big guy. He's a really big yeah. guy. And. You know, missing that much time, you have to, you know, you have to be comfortable in your movements coming back from from injury. Uh, that's not an easy thing to do. It's, it's it's a mental, it's like a mental block there sometimes with certain players, especially when you experience injury a lot. Um, you have to be comfortable in your movements. You have to trust your movements. Um, you know, game speed and rehab speed and just workout speed. It's it's not it's the same. Different. No matter it's no matter how same. you try to simulate it, it's not the same. So. Right. Uh, Coming, it's one thing to come back regular season, trying to find your rhythm and things like that. But it's a it's a whole nother beast trying to do it among uh, uh, amidst the playoffs. And you know the playoffs is a monster. Uh, guys will know you're coming back from injury and attack you purposely. Like, I'm telling that, you, that will right. literally be the game. They'll literally attack. Oh, uh, it's his left knee. We're gonna attack left every time. Like that would be a game plan. So uh, you know those things are real, and um, it's not as. Uh, simple as, you know, just, you know, making shots. I mean, obviously him coming back, he could be 60, 70 percent Joel Embiid. And that's still better than 90 percent of the NBA. But with that being said, we for him to carry this Sixers team in the playoffs, we need him at 100 percent or as close to 100 as he can get. So uh, you can expect a huge adjustment and um, definitely some rust with him coming back. I, I think we'll see a lot of rust. And obviously conditioning will be a factor. It, it will. I agree everything because I um my thing is obviously I come back I came back from ACL and mm -hmm. I'm not two two ninety plus but um, the mental part of it coming back mentally uh, trusting yourself understanding that you know, it's going to take time not getting frustrated with not being able to be your stuff one hundred percent and I think it's going to be it's going to take a big toll on the staff as well to be able to manage his minutes uh, manage him not trying to overdo him uh, overexcel himself uh, amongst play. And what I think of these past months that he's been out has given his teammates confidence. Uh, you know, when you got a star player that goes down, you got a guy like Kelly Oubre that steps up. Cameron Payne, mm -hmm. Cameron Payne went crazy last night against the Clippers. So, I mean, you give those type of guys confidence to when, they, when he does come back, he's going to give them even more mm -hmm. confidence. And he's going to be able to trust his teammates more that he doesn't have to go out and score 40 and 20 every night. So I think right. they, they ease him back in. They can avoid Boston in the first round. I think he'll be okay. And he'll continue to improve each round if they can, the further they can get. But, I don't, and I don't see them coming back and trying to put him playing thirty minutes a night. So if he's yeah. okay with coming back playing, you know, four minute stretches, uh, like most like, like a hockey rotation sub wise, keeping him loose on the bench and trusting himself mentally, because uh, lower extremities are hard to come back from and, and be able to overcome. And again, they're going to run the shit out of him probably over down the court trying to chest that left knee. But at the same time, Tyrese Maxey's playing well. Uh, Tobias Harris has been playing well, so the team confidence has grown. Um, they they have they haven't been great the last ten games. I think they're four and six. But again, again going and get a win like that against the Clippers, who actually mm -hmm. had all the guys playing, uh, speaks volumes of that team. And I think they're going to be. I think they'll be okay. Yeah, I mean, I spent a little bit of time around the Sixers uh, this past couple of days, and I, look, I, I think they all know they were hanging on. I was at that game against the Lakers. They just shot horribly. They played really hard, though. They're still playing. They're all still bought in, which you know we all know is, is kind of the big thing when your star goes down. I think this could be interesting for Embiid on the flip side. If he can get, can get back, if the conditioning, if the wind, if sort of the rhythm can come back, he can avoid what we've seen in some recent playoffs, which is that him running out of gas has been an issue, right? I mean, right. he's had this two-month break. So, so 
it works on the flip side too. Your body has had those two months to rest in other places. Obviously you're still rehabbing that injury, but you guys know there's, you know, it's not just a knee. If it's a knee, it's a knee and an ankle and a wrist that's been bothering you and that this and a that, and my body's tired. And if he is able to get his wind and his rhythm back from the injury, if the injury can hold up, because as you said, guys are going to attack him right and left with that. The flip side is he's going to have that burst that he would not have in the postseason, and we've seen in recent years. So I, I don't know. The East is a wild card to me, man. I know that the Celtics obviously are just a class above. We're going to talk about them a little later in the show, and 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 it's just a whole different factor. But once we get past them, I can't tell you what the Bucks are going to do. I can't tell you what the Mavs are going to do. They're threatening to be in third. I mean, it just it, it feels like anything could happen in the East, and so I'm interested to see if Embiid comes back. And 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 look, the Celtics even. I know it's been a historic season, but until they get to a finals and win it, Rajan, there's always going to be questions about them, right? Even with these incredible, crazy, bonkers numbers they're putting up. Absolutely. I mean, we talked about Kentucky earlier. Um, mm-hmm. the, the certain franchises that you have to win, regardless of regular season records. Uh, you can break all the in-season in records you want, but if you don't hang a banner uh, in Beantown, uh, it's a failure. So uh, I look forward to, obviously, that new change. I'm a big fan of Coach Joe uh, Missoula and what he's done already so far. So I'm, I'm rooting for those guys, and I hope they do well and, and hang another banner. But uh, it's going to be a lot of pressure, and they know that. Uh, they brought in a guy like Drew Holiday. Uh, Prezing is not having to be the first or second option. I think it's big uh, mm-hmm. for their for their growth. And then you got the role players that have stepped up this year. Um, Pritchard, uh, Sam, uh, they got a lot of role players. And not not, not I can't forget my guy, Um uh, number nine, <laughs> Derek, uh, White? Derek White. Derek White, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Derek, White. Derek White. So, uh, you know, he's, I think he's definitely an X factor, him and Drew. Uh, they play well, they win. Uh, we know we're going to get from Tatum. We know we're going to get from, uh, <clears throat> from Brown. So I feel like they have a, a well deep team and a well coached team. Uh, even the staff along with Sam Cassell and the other guys he's brought in will, will help tremendously in this playoff run. I think they're going to make, I think they're going to make a deep run and look forward to them in the championship. Yeah, I mean, look, look, I have a hard time sometimes, and we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, putting the Celtics regular season in perspective because so much is through the lens of they've had these playoff kind of fumbles. And so it is hard to talk about what is largely the same group and say, oh, they're amazing, they're great, they're whatever, when they haven't gotten it done when it counted. So it's just hard to have that discussion about them. But it's also hard to avoid the fact that they are playing so insanely well. They're fourth all time in net points per game differential, like all that stuff. Producer Nate and I were getting into an argument before the show started because I was saying that the scoring differential doesn't mean much to me because scoring has just inflated so much. So I can't look at that and say, oh, they're up there with the 2016 Warriors. They're up there with the Bulls, great Bulls teams, because, you know, of the scoring differential. That's not what I can do. How That doesn't do it for me. But I guess my question for you, Boog, is as you're looking at the Celtics team, can you put what they're doing this regular season in context? Or just it doesn't – you can't without the the postseason element. Um, I say yes and no. And um, Mm – the reason I say yes, I can't, I can't, I can't. You got my answer. It's yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Doug. Doug, help me the out. The reason See I what say I deal yes, with <laughs> See, he want to be right and wrong. I mean, he's uh-huh. like, hey, how can you do, <laughs> baby? <laughs> but nah, I say yes and no. Yes, okay. because the regular season gives you a sample size of what you can be in the playoffs. Uh, you know, it's it's rare that you know, a bad regular season team ends up winning a championship. It's a, that's a rare thing. It's usually one of the better teams throughout the regular season that ends up winning. So uh, that's the reason I do say yes. The reason I say no, they've historically done this and went to the playoffs and laid an egg. Like So um, that's the reason I say yes and no. This Celtics team has shown time and time again that they will get to the playoffs and kind of fumble it. Um, this is another opportunity to, you know, you know, compete for another championship. I think this is the best version that they have shown of themselves throughout regular season over, you know, the history of them being together, these young team being together. Um, the thing that is on their side, this young group has a lot of experience um, that most, you know, young groups don't really see early on. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown have, you know, basically experienced the playoffs and finals since they've come, come into the league. So they have a lot of experience being on this stage. So, Eventually, experience is going to, you know, play out in your favor. So uh, these guys have been here before. You know, uh, I'm a big 
believer in you learn from your losses. They've taken a lot of losses being on these stages. And uh, this is an opportunity to show that they've improved. So uh, I think this is the best version of them. And uh, they have a great chance at, you know, bringing it home this year. All right, Doe. So if if the Celtics make a real run, are, are we seeing, you know, our little all the smoke group here, especially with KG and Paul uh, coming in too with their pod and their projects? Are yeah. we seeing a full Celtics 08 team representation in support of this Celtics squad? Are you guys going to be courtside? What are we, what, what's the plan here? I'm definitely showing up. Um, I'm yeah. going to be in Coach, hopefully, Coach Missoula's uh, locker room, picking his brain, you know, learning from him and, and, and what it takes, obviously, to get to that level. Um, and if I, I'll, I'll be able to share some knowledge, you know, from that aspect. But at the same time, uh, I'm a fan, you know, because I'm rooting for the young guys, rooting for the city of Boston uh, to have this type of group together this year in particular. I think they got to, they can get it done. So, yeah, you probably will see a lot of us there. I know you'll see a lot of us there, um, hopefully more than the starting five. Like I said, even the other guys that were there alongside of us in, in 08. I know Eddie House will be there. Scalabrini will be there. So, yeah, uh, yeah, we, we'll be in support. Absolutely. All right, you hear that, Boston? You got the guys coming. The, the, we, tried to, guys we, tried to get, we tried to get Cuz there at one point. It just didn't. Couldn't, man. couldn't get it done. Honorary. <laughs> if we could rewind time, man. <laughs> Honorary. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, let's get on to I'll Take That Bet presented by DraftKings. Uh, we're looking at Most Improved Player Award. We're looking at the odds here. Tyrese Maxey, still the leader in the clubhouse here, minus 250. Kobe White is now at plus 170. Jonathan Kuminga is at plus 8,000. That's interesting. And J-Dub also <laughs> plus 8,000. Um, so if you put 100 bucks down on Tyrese Maxi at those odds, you only make 75. That's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> nah. No, I mean, I it's think... a positive, you know? It depends on how you look at money. It's your perspective. It's a positive. That's true. You put 1,000 on Kaminga, you don't lose 1,000. So. <laughs> 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 All right, so are you taking any of these bets? Or are you waiting for the next DraftKings bet? Yeah, we're going to wait for the next round. <laughs> okay. I, I, no, I, I put some gas money in my pocket, man. I'm going to go with Tyree. Shit, I need $75. Okay. I'll take it. All right. Well, All right, well yeah. obviously, I, is he not the favorite to, to win it? Yeah, he right is. Now? Yeah, yeah, I mean, congrats. Congratulations, y'all. <laughs> <fellas. laughs> right. Give us a word over. now. I'm glad, I'm yeah, glad so. to be the first one to give you your congrats, man. <laughs> There you go. All right. So, Joe, you haven't been on the show since we started doing this. Boogie and I have been handed two stats and a lie from our producer, Nate Bronson. And so far, it has not gone as well as we would have hoped is how I'm going to say it, Boog, right? That's the nice way to say it. Um, both of us have, have had some failure on the job. So, Joe, come in. Help us wrap a little bit better. Here we go. Three stats. Two of them are true. One is a lie. Number one, the Suns rank 30. 30 overall, last in the league in fourth quarter scoring. That is stat one. Stat two, Luka leads the league in techs. That is true. Stat, stat three, Giannis ranks first in total free throws made. Mm, that's a trick one right there. Uh, They're all hell no. See, I know not that's that easy. <laughs> I'm going to go with the first hell two. No. I'm yeah. going with the first hell two. No. Suns are 30th. I'm, I'm, I don't mm-hmm. know how the hell they're 30th in the, you know, in the fourth quarter, but I can Think see. Think about who I they have on that roster. I know, and think about who, who they don't have. But. Who the hell passing it? <laughs> That's what That's I'm all saying. I'm right. saying. <laughs> uh, I've been, I've been saying yes. this all year. Boogie has bro. been on this since the beginning of the year. <laughs> I'm gonna go with uh, uh, Luca and Giannis. Well, well, okay. So which one's a lie? The lie is Giannis ranks first in total free throws made. What about you, Bug? I think the Suns and the Luca one are true. Mm-hmm. And Giannis is is the, the lie. lie. All right, I'm gonna make that an even three. Well, look, I know that they ranked the Suns ranked last in fourth quarter scoring as of like four or five days ago because it came up. Oh, Nate, damn. are we right. are we correct? Giannis is the lie. Ding ding ding! Yay! Ah, we got to pop some bottles, man. Let's pop Ooh, some bottles. <laughs> Go, spark up. I'm selling. You know, it's time to celebrate, man. <laughs> That's Jay-Z. Okay, right. Perfect. Okay, yeah, that right. makes sense. 
All right. That fourth quarter scoring, scoring stat with the Suns, though, is bonkers. I, I just I heard that the other day and I was like, you've got to be. I mean, I knew that it wasn't going well, but but you've got to be kidding me. And that's something that even when their guys are playing and, and Boog, you're right, you've been on it since the beginning, not having a true point guard in there, um, you know, to organize them in those moments. I think Book has done a very good job. I think, in fact, he's done as good a job as you could have asked him to do as the player who mm-hmm. he is. That's just different right. than having a guy I like Doe in there or someone like my that. My whole opinion on it is um, – it's a championship point guard. Matter of fact, he's top five all time working in your organization. I think you might want to listen to the advice he gives you on constructing a team. Mm-hmm. I, I think it. I think it might play out in their favor. How do you have a a, a top five all time? I don't. I don't work for no, the Suns. Not, not you, motherfucker. Not oh, you. Oh, okay. uh, I, his his okay. name is Isaiah Thomas. Uh, oh, okay. yeah, right, right. And not the one on the ten day. Not the one on the no, ten. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. Big, big Isaiah. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, I just feel like he his voice should be, you know, respected a little more. Um, like he's done this. He's done it. As, he's done it as a player. Like he, he understand what's it take, what it takes to, you know, be a championship team. So, uh, you know, I've spoken to him personally and I just feel like his, his, his voice should be a little more respected because this this. Three guard scoring, I, it, it makes no sense to me. It, it, it literally, it doesn't. It, it just doesn't. And obviously it's not working. So that's just my two cents. Well, the Phoenix Suns, a team that used to have 200 starting point guards on the roster and now has no no, no yeah. point guard. It's just like a whole. Man. It's <laughs> that team has never gotten that, that position yeah. right in a very yeah. long time. So, yeah. so I don't know. All right. Well, <laughs> gentlemen, I hope by the time I see you next, uh, Kentucky basketball will have solved all its problems, possibly with the two of you. We'll see. I want to know what's the outcome of the betting you've done on the show tonight. We'll have to see what happens there. Um, what particular jobs for John Rondo is up for over the next four or five days. <laughs> we'll have to find that out. There is a lot going on on Bully Ball. <laughs> Boogie's plant. Boogie, does that plant have a name yet, by the way? Weren't we discussing? Nah, but just know it's flourishing. All right, yeah. Planty McPlanterson. It's yeah, it's, it's so bring that over. Show Doe. Put it more in the frame. Show Doe what you got. Come here. Oh, I want okay. to meet you. That's his, his special friend. <sighs> okay. You can love your plant, Boogie. Just don't yeah, love yeah. your plant. No, no, no. It ain't no, it ain't on no weird shit, but I do love my plant. So it's you, all talk good. To him, you talk to him often? It depends That's good. on what I'm the plant. Or not. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you're so. supposed to talk to plants. In all seriousness, no, you're right. That's, 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 what I'm, that's what I'm saying. You're right. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we, we connect. We connect. You, you spend know. time. Okay. <laughs> Take care. Yeah. <laughs> Touch, Come to Bully touch, Ball yeah. for the NBA basketball. Stay for the horticultural advice. <laughs> you can catch all episodes of our show on the DraftKings Network. That's exciting. All the Smoke Productions YouTube channel. Uh, you can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts. We will be here. Rate, review us. We will see you next Monday. See ya.